before we get started, I want to make sure that that we give a big shout out and thank you to all of our sponsors that that make these kinds of things possible, and, and this one in particular for our chamber, uh, AT and T Foundation Risk Partners, FPL Charter Spectrum, Diaby Consulting and Management, and Daytona International Speedway. Um, all of our major sponsors of of this event uh, yesterday and today. I um, mean, with that, we'll uh, turn it over to uh, to Kevin with uh, AT and T. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Lynn, and, and I see the representative has joined us just now. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thanks for taking some time to meet with uh, us here at the Daytona Regional Chamber. Um, I'm Kevin Craig with at and I'm our Regional Director of uh, Corporate and External Affairs here in North Florida, proud Chamber Board member, and just want to give a quick salute to Ken and Nancy and Jim and the whole Chamber team and Lynn for uh, a great virtual Volusia Day so far. Uh, obviously, a lot of adapting and wish we were all together in Tallahassee to meet with the representative this morning. Go ahead with my introduction. Um, our first guest, Representative Barnaby, was recently elected in 2020 to represent uh, the good people of Florida House District 27. Uh, he brings experience serving as a Deltona City Commissioner, uh, where he currently is serving on the Commerce Committee, Criminal Justice and Public Safety Subcommittee, Government Operations Subcommittee, Healthcare Appropriations Subcommittee, Insurance and Banking Subcommittee, and Local Administration and Veterans Affairs Subcommittee. Representative, they're uh, keeping you pretty busy your first legislative session, it sounds like. Uh, really appreciate you taking a few minutes to join us this morning and uh, um, look forward to hearing a quick update from you on uh, how the session's going so far, sir. Thank you. Well, I'm, pr I'm proud to be here this morning and um, good morning to everyone on the call. I'm extremely excited about the, the things that we're doing here for everyone in our region and um, looking forward to big things here and in the coming years here in Tallahassee. Lynn, you might be on mute. Thanks, Kevin. That's the first time that I did that in the in the day and a half so far, so I think I'm doing pretty good. Um, thank you for letting me know that because I was, I was still talking. Um, thanks, Representative Barnaby. I guess we could get to, to some questions. I, I had a couple uh, initial ones, if you don't mind just sharing your thoughts on the COVID-19 liability protection bills. Well, I think it's critical that we in the legislature um, get this piece of legislation through um, because many of our small businesses are very, very nervous about the fact that they could be suffering tremendous loss um, based on uh, lawsuits and uh, due to the COVID. Um, the, so we're trying to protect them by putting in some protections for that small business person uh, from a, a lawsuit that would devastate their business simply because of COVID and through no fault of their own. This is a national global pandemic and um, it's very, very sad that we live in a litigious society today where litigation abounds. You only have to uh, look on television. I, I was about to say look in the phone book, but we don't hardly do that anymore. But on TV, we can see the vast majority of ads are from law firms simply because of the nature of society today and uh, how, how litigation affects uh, business. And so we want to make sure that business can thrive and that they're not suffocated or handcuffed or hemmed. Um, and in order to do that, the legislature is trying to make sure that the playing field is uh, an, a, an even playing field with as limited restrictions as possible. Uh, regulations is important. Where there is a need for regulations, we absolutely support that. But where there is uh, an overbearing uh, approach, um, then certainly those regulations need to be restricted or even removed. Well, we certainly agree with that uh, at the Daytona Chamber uh, representative, and, and we appreciate you know your your support and your leadership on that. Um, any thoughts on the uh, online sales tax legislation that we've been hearing about? There is. Um, as one would say, the jury is still out on that one. Uh, I've, I've talked to several businesses that um, support an online sales tax. Um, 
depends on what type of business you're, you're speaking with. Um, but people recognize that um, there is a change in uh, the way business is done today, um, particularly with uh, uh, the brick and mortar stores um, losing uh, share, um, losing market to the online businesses um, and this new trend not slowing down. Uh, we as lawmakers, as leaders, um, acknowledge the fact that uh, uh, just like brick and mortar stores are paying taxes and they're in business, uh, those that are doing business online, uh, there needs to be a way in which these people uh, are uh, having their equitable uh, part of our commerce. Um, I, I'm not a, a big tax guy. I, I, I really believe in less taxation uh, if there's a way to do that. So I think, um, as I said, the verdict is still out. We're still finding, looking for a sweet spot in which to take care of this situation. And I'm, I'm proud to work with the chamber, to work with organizations like yours to make sure that we are getting this absolutely right. We don't want to overshoot the runway. Uh, we want to make sure we're doing things exactly the right way with the right balance. Yeah, that's definitely a different, uh, a difficult one for those of us that, that don't like taxes as a general concept, right? And trying to keep the, the playing field even between all the, the different participants. Um, I think I see some, some questions coming in. Um, uh, Here's one. As a Can new I representative, just all that oh, real sure. quick. This, this yeah, Jim. Sure. sure, Jim. Go ahead. But, good morning, uh, Jim. How are you, Jim Cameron? Good, good. Webster, appreciate it there. Then, listen. I mean, the other day, last Thursday, the uh, Ways and Means Committee approved that strike all amendment. You probably saw that. And yes. business community is still very much in support of online sales tax for the reasons that Lynn just mentioned. Get we chamber since 2007 we want to get that level playing field between local bricks and mortar merchants and the the, the multinational online retailers but you got a situation where you got about a 3.5 billion dollar shortfall or you got to make up that deficit as it relates to unemployment compensation fund we talked with uh dane eagle yesterday from deo yesterday but so they're you know, they put that amendment on there to have the revenue about $1.1 billion going towards that $3.5 billion deficit, though. I mean, and business community is still very much in support of it, though, because, and you probably saw my text last Friday night anyway, that uh, it, it, it really helps two situations, two birds, one stone, that, you uh, that that's another situation that a massive tax on employers as for unemployment compensation would be very detrimental and this is going to help bring down that deficit though agreed agreed jim um as i said in my comments earlier um we're still trying to find the sweet spot um talking to all the major stakeholders um we, we're always trying to strike the right balance and um you know, there's a lot of everything is new for not only legislators, it's new for business people, and we're trying to do the right thing. Uh, we don't want to do anything that would hurt small businesses. We want to make sure that we are doing the right thing. Striking the right balance is very important. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Um, let's see one of the questions in the in the chat here. Um, I guess it just says seminal compact question. Yes. Any any commentary on that? If, I'm sorry, my name is uh, Fred Guzman. I'm the uh, president and general manager of Orange City Racing and Card Club and Daytona Beach uh, Racing and Card it? Club. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. I have an and, office just a block away from you guys. You need to come and visit me. Yes, it, 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 most certainly. And just to, to let the group know, Orange City has uh, been doing wonderfully uh, ever since we opened in 2017. Uh, we are the number two card room in the state. Yeah. Uh, we just recently surpassed uh, Palm Beach uh, Poker Room. Uh, the question I had is that Seminole Compact Bill will, will be coming out. That's at least that's what we're hearing 
uh, by the end of this week. Uh, and our ask uh, to our senators and representatives is to let us keep what we have. Uh, we haven't seen the compact, so all we can go by is what's been in former iterations of the compact. Uh, in the past compact that was not ratified, uh, what they did is they, they took away designated banker games. That's something that uh, has become a big part of our business. It's about 47 part percent of our business. Uh, the other tactic they took was to allow us to have the game, uh, but really restricted how much you can wager and how much you can win, pretty much rendering it unplayable. Uh, the also the other thing that's going to come up is sports wagering. Uh, as as you may all know, sports wagering, 75% uh, of the states uh, have a form of sports wagering. In in my opinion, uh, sports wagering is inevitable. Uh, in the state of Florida. Uh, in the past compact, uh, the way that they did it was for the uh, Seminoles to act as a hub for sports betting. Uh, and tracks like Orange City Racing and Card Club in Daytona, we would be affiliates. Uh, we oppose this method uh, simply because uh, sports betting is a low margin business to begin with. If as an affiliate, you're just pretty much a ticket taker for the Seminoles, and you would uh, be lucky to make uh, one to one and a half percent. So if sports wagering does come, we very much would like to be an operator and not an affiliate. Um, that's that's really all I have. And thank you for your time, sir. And I appreciate it. And I will uh, come and see you. Thank you so much. I'm at 2730 Enterprise Road. Okay. And um, your, your, your comments is duly noted that you wish to be an operator not an affiliate, right? Correct, for sports betting. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, mean, I want to thank you, sir, for the wonderful um, way that you've uh, invigorated commerce in Volusia County and in our state. And um, I'm certainly appreciative of for the revenues that you've brought to the area and that you continue to bring uh, to people that enjoy the entertainment that, uh, that you provide in a good, clean, wholesome environment. And I thank you for that. Thank you for your kind words, sir. Well, thank you both. Um, another question from the from the chat room. As a new representative, what are some of your specific goals that you hope to advance in your leadership role? Well, you know, freshmen typically um, don't get a lot of things put through, but I'm working, uh, in fact, I'm presenting a bill today um, in on um, criminal justice, juvenile justice. And, and that is uh, a bill where um, uh, juveniles who have faced a, a misdemeanor, but they have not been found guilty of a, of a felony. And they may have been caught shoplifting, something minor, uh, that when they reach the age of 18 of adulthood, and they're now applying to college or applying to the military. Uh, typically, if that misdemeanor record stayed on their records, they would they would not be allowed entry into the U.S. military or even a college. So my bill would would make sure that juveniles, their records, if it were a misdemeanor, would be sealed. If the if the if the crime that they did rose to a level of a, of a felony. Or that they were uh, they they were adjudicated in adult court, then their records would be clearly seen, and uh, it would not be sealed. Uh, so this bill is is moving favorably. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about juvenile justice and about justice reform, and I'm trying to be proactive, getting out front and doing that. I'm also working on a, on a bill that's getting a lot of favorable. Uh, comments uh, for the clerk of courts. Uh, we have 67 clerks, 67 counties, courts, and um, unfortunately, their budgets are tied to um, law enforcement writing traffic tickets. And because of COVID, um, there's, there's not been a lot of traffic tickets being written. And because of that, um, the courts, the clerk simply do not have the budget. And because they don't have the budget, they have had to furlough and they've had to lay people off. 
And um, I found that about this, I found out about this during the summer when uh, Volusia County's clerk of the court, Laura Roth, called me and told me uh, while I was running, I was not elected yet, that she had to lay people out, off and furlough people. And I was, um, I was shocked. I said, if I ever got elected to Tallahassee, I'll try and do something to, um, to find out why the budget for the clerks was not carved out of our, of our, of our budget, our general fund. So now we, we have a way in which to, because the clerks have what's called a trust fund, the clerks trust. And because of the clerks trust fund, we can carve out a certain percentage that would make sure that every clerk in our state would have a budget to pay their staff. And they would not have to rely on officers stopping people and writing people tickets or people coming to court and obviously because of COVID, a lot of people were not coming to court, so the service fees were, were not there. Uh, I also find this also troubling for me as, as an African-American where many minorities have felt aggrieved that they, they were stopped more than any other member of our society. And um, come to find out that police officers were, were, were encouraged to write tickets just so that we could... Uh, have a budget for the clerks um, and, and my bill would make sure that uh, we would not rely on police officers, we would not be forcing police officers to write tickets so that we can um, take care of the budget for the clerk of the courts. Um, this would remedy uh, so many things and uh, I'm just proud to be able to, to be the, the sponsor of the clerk's bill and um, it's moving and um, it's gaining a lot of um, uh, support in all, of, all the committees that I've presented it in two committees so far. We've got one more to go and then I'll bring it to the House for a big vote. And uh, this is just a couple of things I'm working on to make a difference. Um, I think it's very important for me because as a, as a black Republican, um, uh, it's important that people can see that we, the Republican Party, uh, are very active in, in doing something um, right off the gate that will definitely show and demonstrate to people in the state that we care strongly about minorities. We care strongly about the issues that affects our communities. And uh, we're, we're doing something to, to make a, an immediate impact that will help um, people throughout our entire state and our region. Uh, that's really interesting, uh, Representative. It's one of those things that um, effect of this pandemic that you would never have imagined in a million years that, that it, you know, that, that people getting sick would somehow affect the budget for the clerk of court. So uh, you guys have you have quite a task ahead of you this year, and I wish you luck with that, um, with, with your bill and with handling all those kind of things that, that the rest of us here um, just kind of sit back and watch. So thank you for that. I have one last question, um, and then We'll, we'll close this session out um, and, and move on to, to our next speaker. Uh, would you support qualified target industry refund renewal? I would have to say that I need to look at that more. Um, I want to research that more, and I will be more than happy to look at that in, in depth more and give you a more a clear, concise answer on that. But thank you for the question. Appreciate that. Jim, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that um, specifically with that question? Uh, not just what uh, that is something very important to not only Chamber, but also Team Volusia. They're very much behind that, though. And that is a uh, important economic development tool that is needed both at the state and local level. Though. I mean, so, yeah. Please look at it. We'll get some more information to you about that, though. Please do, Jim. Um, I'm always uh, careful how I answer questions that I don't have the full facts about, and I do not have the full facts about that. So please send that to me as, as soon as possible. I'll be happy oh, to, will. to look at it, and, um, and I'll be more than happy to weigh in once I know the facts. That is, that's House Bill 6071 by LaMarca. 6071 by Lamarca, and it's okay. and it's before tourism, infrastructure, yep. and energy subcommittee. Yep, I will look at it, and I'll be happy to get back to you 
In fact, I'll be happy to put something in writing for all your members. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Representative. Thank you for all the work that you're doing for us in Volusia County and in the state. And thank you for taking the time this morning to meet with us. I hope you have a great day. Looking forward to seeing you all in person real soon.